So with all of that said, we have reached the end of the 2023 National Summit on Episodic Disabilities and Employment, where we have centered mental health at work. What an enlightening time we've had together. To continue things in the good way that we have started, I would like to invite Elder Valerie to close our summit. Welcome, Elder Valerie. Thank you so much. And I will just share my screen if I can. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. What a wonderful two days. Uh, Ninja Luisi Valerie. I am Mi'kmaq Haida, UK Islander. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm so emotional from the last one. I can't even remember who I am. Um, but I'm here today. I'm 67. I have gray and white hair, wearing glasses, a red shirt, and many tattoos. Uh, the slide you're seeing is a photo of a rocky beach of the Salish Sea with the water sparkling in the sunlight. I give thanks to all the ancestral traditional lands and waters across our great land from coast to coast to coast and to our ancestors that walked these lands before us so that we may learn. This is a photo of trees looking upward into the branches. I invite all of you to put your feet on the ground and just take a very deep breath in and feel the energy from Mother Earth. And with another deep breath in, honor your body, your mind, your heart, and your spirit. Listen to your body. Your mind gathers knowledges. Think with your heart and your spirit holds everything together. I thank all of you for your dedication and passion and all the work you do. I honor your journey as teachers. You are learners and as learners, you are teachers. And some of the teachings I've learned and heard today in the words, creativity, opening the door. Rest is not earned, it is deserved. Communication, awareness, three things I can do today, acceptance, overcome, inspire, elevate, and warriors. At my rheumatoid arthritis clinic, there's a poster that has changed my thinking. And that poster says, don't think outside the box. Think like there is no box at all. I'd like now, there are seven colors on this slide of green, blue, black, red, white, brown, and yellow. This is a teaching from Elder Fred John, who is now in spirit world. I would like you to take a moment and pick a color that speaks to you. It may be one color, it may be a couple. If green was your choice, you are connecting to the grasses and the cedar trees. You need time to be in nature. And green also represents new growth. Blue is your connection with the waters and, uh, and the sky. They are both vast and shows us that there's much more to explore and see. Black is for the comfort of the night, showing that rest is important. Red represents the sunrise, showing us that there's always new beginnings. If white was your color, it's the stillness of the snow, which shows us it's a time of reflection and to slow down. Brown represents Mother Earth, a time to let her heal us by putting our hands in the dirt or our feet on the ground, bare feet. It is also a time of planting seeds, seeds of the plants or seeds of ideas. Yellow for the sun, as the rays we're reaching out and teaching and sharing our knowledges and spreading love and joy. This is a picture 
of a very good friend of mine walking in the snow, carrying many bags. And this is a teaching from my grandfather's. And he said to me one day when I was little, if you were to walk a hundred miles, how much would you carry? I thought of how much would go in my backpack and my satchel, my medicine bag. And he let me think about this as he watched me stuffing bags because I'm very visual. And then he looked at me again and said, little one, if you were to walk a hundred miles, how much would you carry? And he pointed to my head. He was teaching us about mind health and not to carry what is not ours to carry as it weighs us down. This picture is a beautiful friend kneeling in nature, looking into a tranquil pond. She is wrapped in a sacred blanket that she was gifted. The blanket is pink and has a hummingbird on it. And a teaching from the grandmothers that taught us that we need to sit in nature for 20 minutes a day, unless we are busy. Then we need to sit in nature for 60 minutes a day, teaching us about our body health. This is a photo of a very old living tree on Vancouver Island, and I don't know exactly where it was taken. It was taken by Hassan, and Nilu is in the corner thanking the tree. And this is an Haida teaching from Elder White. If you are questioning or need answers, go out and find a young tree, hug it, put your hand on it, thank the tree, ask your question or your intention, and really listen. Find an old tree. Again, hug it, put your hand on it. Thank the tree for growing. And in our thanks, it could be put water on the ground. It could be with tobacco or just thank you, grandfather, son, for giving the light, mother earth for holding it and the waters for nurturing it. And ask the same question and really listen and feel the differences. Teaching our connection of spirit to nature and nature teaching us the old ways and new to heal and teach and to follow our heart. And some days when I leave work and I see a tree on the sidewalk, I'll go up and thank that tree for growing and just hug it. And I've had a group of people go like, watch me with quiet and then ask me what I was doing. And I would teach them. And then I see each of them hugging a tree. This is a picture of a single plant growing through a pile of rocks. And I acknowledge all lands on our mother earth and we're all indigenous from our ancestral lands. Our ancestors walk with us and carry our teachings. We learn from each other. And most of all, we learn from what was here before us. We are change warriors to actively making a better world, challenging for positive, healthy change. I raise my hands to you, for you are the change warriors. And to remember, the past is always present. We learn, we grow, we change. This is a picture of a blue sky with two eagles flying overhead. We were all gifted the very first four medicines, air. Take a deep breath in and feel that energy. Air teaches us gratitude. Be grateful for all our yesterdays that we've learned from, for all our todays where we do our work, and for all our tomorrows that we will teach to and change. This is a photo of a small waterfall and river on the traditional lands of the Sakawat people of the interior Salish. Water teaches us relationships, ever moving, ever changing, has movement and takes on many forms. The ocean with tides and waves, lakes being calm, rivers and waterfalls that show us change and challenge, rain that is cleansing, snow and frost teaching us to slow down and rest, and dew to remind us the start of a new day of renewal, and tears that can be salty when sad, and sweet when the tears of joy. This is a photo of a brightly burning fire. Fire teaches us new beginnings. Grandfather's son warms us and grows our plants and trees and medicines. 
Fire also warms us and shows and teaches us the passion of life. This is a picture of rolling hills where the buffalo jump is at Wanaskewan near the west bank of the South Saskatchewan River on Opaha Creek. Earth teaches us responsibilities. Responsibilities to oneself, others, family, all that is on Mother Earth from the grandfather rocks, the trees, the plants, which are a rooted family, the winged ones in the sky, with the waters, the finned ones, the four-legged, our crawlers, our slitherers, and those that carry their homes. These are all our relations. This is a picture of a mama grizzly bear and her two cubs in a river with a big fallen tree in the background. The photo credit to Maple Leaf Adventures. Courage is represented by the bear in my teachings. The mother bear has the courage and strength to face her fears and challenges while protecting her young. The bear also teaches and shows us how to live a balanced life with rest, survival, and play. To face life with courage is to know bravery. Find your inner strength to face the difficulties of life and the courage to be yourself. Defend what you believe in and what is right for your community, your family, and self. Make positive choices and have conviction in your decisions. Face your fears to allow yourself to live your life. The bear stands tall to remind us of the teachings of courage. Listen to your heart. It takes courage to do what is right. This is a painting of a rainbow with water and a photo of an eagle sitting in a tree with the many languages of thank you from the peoples of this land. I thank you for this day and the work and voices of knowledges and wisdoms we heard throughout our time together and the courage of the shared, lived, and living experiences. Thank you for those that keep our home fires burning so that we can do this work in a good way. And I raise my hands to everyone here. And dance before you go to bed. This is an old from our ancestors. It let go of all your worries, your stress energy, and gives you a restful sleep. Will Ellen, all my relations to all of you. Aho. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Elder V, you, you had me met mesmerized. <laughs> so I was looking for my unmute button and couldn't find it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our participants. Thank you to our presenters. Thank you to our interpreters and inclusion support providers. We've gotten so many compliments uh, from participants. Thank you to the organizing committee led by Melissa Egan, who's been working magic in the background. And I know I started with you, the participants, but I'm saying thank you again. You could have chosen to spend these two days anywhere. You've chosen to spend that time with us. We continue to build community, not just for employers, but especially for community with lived and living experience. To our keynote speakers, Danielle and Kirsten, you absolutely rock. Thank you so much. 
centering mental health at work is not just a slogan. It needs to be a fact of life. So as you take what you've learned today with you, please share with anyone um, that you can, because that's how we'll continue to get the message out. We look forward to uh, seeing you next year, and we look forward to keeping in touch. If I've forgotten to thank anyone at all, please forgive me. Um, it's Wednesday, it's hump day. <laughs> all the best to you again, Elder Valerie. Thank you for starting us in a good way and ending us in a good way. Bye everyone, till next year.